Good afternoon. Today is 4 May, the year 2012. I'm Dr. Dave Thompson, a volunteer at the Palm Springs Air Museum here in Palm Springs, California. As part of the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., we conduct interviews of veterans and civilians who participated in our country's military conflicts, especially World War II. Today, I'm here at the museum, along with special guest Mary McClatchy, and today we have the honor and the privilege of interviewing Staff Sergeant Robert McClatchy. Sergeant McClatchy was a nose gunner on a B-24 in Europe during World War II. So we're going to talk to him about that and a lot of other things. So good to have you here, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That is better. <clears throat> Okay, Bob. Um, first of all, would you uh, spell your full name and repeat it, please? Yes. Uh, my name is Robert McClatchy, M-C, capital C-L-A-T-C-H-E-Y. And uh, uh, did you have a middle name? Robert Franklin. Oh, Frank. I was named after my grandfather, Benjamin Franklin McClatchy. <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good one, too. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like to fly kites? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, uh, where were you born and when? I was born in uh, a little town called Kankakee, Illinois. It's about 60 miles south of Chicago. Kankakee means land of the beautiful river. It's an Indian name. Mm -hmm. And I was born in 1925, April 8th, 1925. So you just had a birthday not too long ago, so that makes you how many so, years young? I'm a big 87 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're looking good, going strong. Thank you. Yeah, Kankakee, isn't there an Indian tribe, the Kankakee? And there's a Kankakee River, I know. There's a Kankakee River that goes through the town. Okay. I grew up in southern Indiana, and so... You know, I, you probably had the same had Indiana yeah. history, and you go back to all the Indian tribes and everything around right. there. Yeah, yeah the a, French traders were there, mm -hmm. and the Indians lived there in caves at one time. Yeah, I so, know. Uh, there's uh, where you know, there's there's some French names towns, uh -huh. but they're pro we pronounce them more English, like. Uh, Dubois County instead of Dubois and right. stuff like that. You know. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, and your father, what was his name and what did he do? His name was George David McClatchy. He was a, 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 a what do you call it, a, a supervisor in a, a Florence Stove Company. He worked there for many years in Kankakee. And how did he end up in Kank uh, Kankakee? Where did his ancestors he, all he come from? He started out as a farmer and was wiped out by the Depression and came to Kankakee to get a job. And his brother was there also. So. And uh, do you know where in the old country that uh, the, the ancestors all came from? My grandparents came directly from Sweden. I'm, I'm not just sure. But, but my mother and her parents conversed in Swedish oh, okay. many times when I'd visit them as a little boy. What was your mom's name and her maiden name? Her name was Carrie Ruth. Maiden name was Hokanson. Mm -hmm. The McClatchy's, though, where did they all come from? They're you know? uh, more Scottish and mm -hmm. well, uh, Scottish and French. Yeah. yeah. And do you know where your mom and dad met? Uh, they met in the countryside when uh, they were both living on farms. Uh -huh. My dad used to tell me about. Uh, He'd go on a date with a horse and buggy, and he'd go to sleep, and the horse would take him home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the, um, and uh, brothers and sisters? Do you have any brothers and sisters? I had one brother who's deceased, and another sister who was killed in a playground accident. And I have one sister who is now 85, uh, wait a minute, 95 years old. She still lives in Illinois. Uh -huh. And what were their names? My your, brother. My your brother's name sisters. was Marvin George McClatchy, and the other one was Irene McClatchy. I can't remember the middle name now. Yeah. And my 
a sister's name is Helen, and the other sister was Irene. The playground accident, how old was she when that happened? I was probably five or six years old, I think, and she was maybe a year or two older. Do you know what happened? Yes, they're, they were swinging and uh, a couple girls and they were at the top of their arc and she stepped in front of them the, and it hit her in the head and the swing, her the, skull. The swing, yeah, they were probably yeah. wooden swings. And, oh. Yeah. That was it, at the school? Yes. The school. No, were, it wasn't at a school, oh. it was at a park. Oh, you, but you weren't there at the time? I was there, oh, I you, saw it happen. Oh, you saw it happen? Yeah. Oh yeah, God. we tried, we carried her home. And the hospital was only a couple blocks away, and we didn't realize we were kids, you know. To, yeah. But we carried her home, and she lived a couple days after that. Mm, I'm yeah. sorry to hear that. Yeah, that was probably pretty. Had to be pretty traumatic yeah. you know, for a little kid yeah, like you at the time. I still remember it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. Um, so, you but you were living in Kankakee at the time. Yes. Or, okay. I lived in Kankakee until I was 18. Now Kankakee, what was the population at that time and what is it now? I'd say maybe 25,000. Still about the same? No, it's larger yeah. than that now. Yeah. Yes. Um, your, was your family very religious? Did you guys go to church a lot? Yes, my mother was very religious and uh, I had to go to vacation Bible school, <laughs> which I resisted. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we always went to church. What Sunday. denomination, or where was the church uh, that you went to? We're a Protestant uh -huh. religion, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and what did you kids do for fun when you were growing up? What did we do for fun? We played ball, you know, and, and uh, marbles. We had, uh, of course, we didn't have any television or anything like that, so we were outdoor sports mm -hmm. mainly. And Listen to the radio, I'm sure. Yeah, we used to listen to the Green Hornet. <laughs> did um, Did you follow uh, the Chicago teams, the Cubs and the White Sox? Yes, you used to follow the Cubs okay. mainly. Yeah. And I did get to go to that ballpark one did time. Did you? Wrigley so, Field? Yeah, yeah Wrigley. Still there, right? Yeah, still there. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's really great, yeah. Um, did you play, um, well, where'd you go to grade school? In, uh, in Kankakee. Uh, I uh, can't remember the name of this school right now. I think it was Lafayette, but I what uh, What street did you live on? Or what, do you remember the address? Yeah, it was 425 North 7th Avenue in Kankakee. So you pretty much lived there uh, all pretty the time much, growing up yeah. in that house? Was it, what we kind did, of house was it? A two it story? was a two-story house uh -huh. with uh, bedrooms upstairs and it had a basement. Yeah. Now you grew up, I would think, somewhat during the Depression. What was that like for you and your family? I remember vividly guys coming off the railroad tracks asking for something to eat and willing to work for a sandwich. Mm -hmm. And I was just a little kid then, but I, I still remember it vividly. Yeah. And uh, my mother would always give them something. Never turn one down. When you were a kid, were you interested in aviation then? Very much, yeah. How, how how so, or what, what prompted Well, that? I used to build model airplanes and fly them, you know, and always, I was always interested in aviation. Did you have a little airport in Kankakee? Was yes, there? uh huh. Yeah, we'd go out there and watch the planes take off and land. And Did you ever get to go up in a plane before you went to the service? Never. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, My dad would take us to the airport to see him, but he never went up in one. And I guess there was a high school in Kankakee that you oh, went yes. to? Oh, yes, yeah. Did you play any sports in school? I played football, and but it was never that great. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I worked so much part time. I had I had to earn my own way. So, what were some of the odd jobs that you had? I started out as a paper boy. No, I started out selling magazines to barber shops, and hmm. then I got two paper routes, and that kept me really busy. So. <laughs> Um, yeah. Did you uh, have any favorite teachers in school that you can recall? Yes, I did. Uh, I can't remember their names now. Uh, too, too long ago. 
<laughs> but what did they teach? I mean, or did you have favorite subjects that you uh, in school? Well, he taught English and math. I liked math, so mm -hmm. I was always pretty good in math. Yeah. And uh, so, did you have any uh, special girlfriends in high school? In high school, yes, I did, and that was, uh, yeah, okay. a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, did, um, so what year did you graduate from high school then? Uh, in 19, let's see, 1943, I guess it was. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Do you remember what you were doing December 7th, 1941? Pearl Harbor was attacked. I heard it, I think I heard it over the radio. I, I don't remember what I was doing yeah. though at that time. Were you up on current events or anything at that point in time? Could you Not see as something much like as this I am coming? Now, you know, yeah. I, we're more interested in other things, it seemed like. But I do recall reading the newspaper and seeing a Air Force mag, uh, advertisement with the P-51 on it, and uh, that's the thing I wanted to fly, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, so what did you do after you graduated from high school? I enlisted in the uh, Army Air Corps. You did? Oh, right. I after. was 17 when I enlisted, and they, I went to Chicago and took my physical, and they took me when I turned 18. Okay. A couple months after. And uh, so where 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 did you go first? I went to Miami Beach, Florida for basic training. And then I went to Syracuse University in Syracuse, New York for my college training detachment. Mm -hmm. What time of the year were you in Syracuse? That when I went to Florida that was I think it was August of forty three. Mm -hmm. Then the base, the basic training was I don't know two or three months maybe longer. Mm -hmm. Then I went up to Syracuse. It was winter time. I don't. Mm -hmm. Pretty cold. But yeah, up pretty there, cold I would up imagine. There. Yeah. yeah, and um, and so okay, okay. So then and then from Syracuse, where did you go? From Syracuse, I went to classification down mm -hmm. in Nashville, Tennessee. Took all these different tests, and then. Uh, I guess I didn't score that high on them, so uh, I went to armament school after that in, in Denver, Colorado, Buckley Field, I remember. Mm -hmm. Had you done any hunting when you were a kid? Had you oh, done yeah. much shooting? Yeah, I was a pretty good shot. My father started me pheasant hunting when I was six years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you learned how to lead the... Yeah, I learned how to... I was familiar with guns. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, um, how long? So you were out in Denver in armament school. Is that where yeah. you're uh, firing the weapons and things like that? Yeah, and they they had you take machine guns apart and and things like that. And learn about different bombs and things mm -hmm. like that. But yeah. uh, I can't recall if I uh, seemed to me the first time I fired a uh, machine gun was at Tyndall Field in Florida, and I can't recall whether it was after or before. Okay. And um, so then eventually did you, when did you get assigned to uh, a group or, or you knew that you were going to be on a B-24? Uh, after, well I went for combat crew training in Boise, Idaho, Gowan Field. And we met our crews on the troop train going up there, and we had a big party, mm -hmm. you know, getting acquainted. Yeah. And after combat crew training, uh, we went up to uh, New Jersey. Uh, what's the name of that base? I can't recall right now. And uh, from there, went on the Queen Mary to mm -hmm. from New York to Scotland, Glasgow, mm -hmm. Scotland. And was she by herself, not in a, in a or in a convoy when when you guys she went? She went all the way by herself, yeah, zigzagged all the way. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. thought because she's faster than just about yeah. any other ships around. So yeah. Yeah, it was. And how was your? Uh, did you get seasick at all, or yeah, pretty? I good. never got seasick, but a lot of guys did. Yeah. And we had bunks that were about eight high, you know, and just enough where you could slide in between. <laughs> 
and uh, yeah. there are a lot of. And uh, so where did you end up uh, over? The uh, or we got off the ship and got on a troop train and went to Norwich, England, at our air base there, Seething Air Base. How do you spell that? S E E T H I N G, I think. Near Norwich, huh? Yeah. And was that a B 24 base? That was a B 24. No B 17s there at all, just B 24. No, no B 17s. Eighth Air Force, so? Eighth Air Force. Okay. And. Um, 448th Bomb Group. Do you know the squadron? Squadron M, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. Okay. And uh, so the the crew that you had met in the States, mm -hmm. were you still all together when yes, you got over? Yes, we were all together. Oh. And did you stay together as a crew throughout? We stayed together all the, whole time. all the time, yeah. And do you remember your pilot's name? Yes, Dick Page. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. did, he was good, you thought? He was really a nice guy, really. Very athletic guy, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll tell you what, this might be a good time. Grab that uh, over there. There's a B-24 right there. Oh, now, right I, here? Yeah, no, just leave that the way it is. Okay. And, but take this. I want you to point out some of the characteristics okay. of it, if you could. Sure. Uh, let me come in on it a little bit. Well, uh, I don't know if it looks exactly like the one that you had. No, that's an old version. Uh -huh. The R's had a turret here, mm -hmm. a top turret. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a belly turret. Okay. And we had two waist guns. And you were in the nose, right? I was right here in the nose in the uh, turret. And what did you have, twin 50s? Twin 50s, yeah. Okay. Now the bombardier, where would he have been? I dropped the bombs. Oh, we, you, you did that We too? were doing pattern bombing at that time. You'd bomb yeah. off the lead? Yes, we'd bomb on the lead. So I you'd be like a toggleer, they call it. I had a toggle, yeah, I was called okay. a toggleer. All right, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So you had a pilot and a co-pilot. We'll show this just shows right. a pilot and co-pilot right there. up here. And then you were up there by yourself right in the here. Nose? Well, the navigator was oh, right. navigator. He was right. right behind me. Okay, I got you. Uh huh. And you had? Did you have waist gunners? We had one and yeah, we had two. two one, one on each side. side and a tail gunner. And a tail gunner and a yeah. turret. And a, yeah. Okay. Um, but no top turret. No. Wait. Or, or did you have top? Yeah, top turret. Had top turret, but no uh, bottom, bottom turret. No belly. No. Uh, no, no, mm -hmm. ball turret. Yeah, no, our flight engineer flew the uh, the top turret. Right. We had a radio operator also. Uh huh. So a crew of ten, nine, ten, nine, nine, nine. nine. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, did you did you like the B twenty four? I mean, oh, we called it the flying box car. <laughs> yeah. <I> know, but <laughs> But how did the pilots, how did it handle for them? And They handled it pretty well, yeah. Yeah. Flying formation wasn't easy, that's for sure. Yeah. But they, they did a good job. So when you did go in formation, how many would be in your in your section, I guess you might say? Oh, God. 12, 13, know, something like that? Something like that, maybe. And, and your first, do you remember your first mission? Uh, where did one? I have it in my booklet there, but I can't recall where it is. Okay, all right. Yeah, uh, it probably was an airfield or something like that. Yeah. I don't and know. that would have been still in, would have been 44? Uh, yeah, 40, no, 45. 45, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we started flying uh, January 45. And well, tell me some of your missions. Did you fly into Germany on, on any yes, of Yes, we did. We went, we bombed. Marshalling yards, a munitions plant, I recall, because mm -hmm. I saw that baby blowing up. <laughs> and uh, airfields. Uh, we had a mission to Berlin. That one I recall vividly because we, <clears throat> we had a cold front and everybody scattered and we, you couldn't see a thing. And we flew through this and then came out and there's this big beautiful city down there. Mm -hmm. And we had to fly through very heavy flak to get that marshalling yards and mm -hmm. so it was good. Did anybody get hurt on your plane on any of your missions? No. Uh, we flew a mission where they crossed the Rhine River, the paratroopers. Mm -hmm. uh, we were coming in at treetop level and dropping supplies to these guys. And there were 240 bombers on that mission. 20, 20 of them got shot down. We had 20 holes in our plane. 
And that was the first time I ever saw German soldiers, and they were all shooting at me. <laughs> Got so low, wow. And I couldn't shoot back because they, they took our guns out, except for the top turret, because they're afraid we'd hit our own men. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we went, dropped our, dropped the supplies. I think we were hauling ammunition for them, and and we made a turn and came back, and the pilot opened that thing wide open, so <laughs> we could get out of there. <laughs> But uh, uh, what are you trying to tell me? Well, the bullet, the bullet, the bullet, bullet just missed your head. Give, give huh? a second. Give, give. No, no, right, right here. Dick. They shot no, no, right here. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. that that mission. Uh, one of the, I saw these Germans shooting at me, and one of the bullets came through my turret, just missed my head, and it just missed the navigator behind, and none of our guys got hit. That was on that low, low that was level on, when yeah, they were tree top yeah. level. On that. Wow! The only reason I was flying on that, I was supposed to watch out for any obstacles. <laughs> but, uh, did uh, did you have a uh, fighter escort on any had, on your missions? Yeah, we did. We had P fifty ones, and one time we had P forty sevens also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We when we bombed uh, a jet air base. I remember that the ME 262s came up, and uh, all I heard was the tail gunner say, Jesus Christ, and this jet came through, blew the plane right in front of us. It, it was like a blast furnace, and, and it just it just shocked you, because it, you know, and, and they just dropped, and nobody got out of it. Mm. And uh, that, that P-51 that was chasing this jet, looked like a Model T Ford chasing a Cadillac. <laughs> I never saw anything as fast as that, that ME-262 was. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really think Hitler could have changed the war if he'd gotten those up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've talked to other guys that yeah. felt this, that had seen them, too, yeah. and thought that if they, uh, yep. you know, if they had enough fuel and, you know. Yeah, they could make about two passes yeah. and that was it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hmm. Um, so you made 20, uh, 20 missions, missions in all? Then the war ended, thank yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, have any leave while you were over there? Did you go into London at all? Yes, I did get to go once, I think. Maybe twice, I don't recall. Mm -hmm. But it was blacked out, of course, at that time. And there were, were an awful lot of guys there. <laughs> were buzz bombs coming in at that time? Yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, one of them hit not too far from a hotel we were staying at, mm. but you used to hear them uh, going over at night in our Quonset hut. You'd hear, oh. you, you know, every. And I, we'd get out there early in the morning, getting ready to fly, you know, and we'd see the rockets coming from the French coast, because we weren't that far from the coast. Did you have to deal with German fighters on any of your missions? Yeah, we we had uh, besides the, that jet yeah, that one time. Yeah, we did have a couple other times, but the the fighter escort kept them out pretty well. Mm -hmm, yeah. So you got to give those guys a lot of credit. It was important that you talked about too, flying real close in formation yeah. to keep them from coming through right. there because right. um, if if and and of course you know unless you take a direct hit when you're over the target or yeah. something like that, one did. Or, Whatever. Yeah. If you're if you're if you are uh, damaged from flak and you can't stay up with the formation, then right. the enemy fighters want to come after you if yeah. they can get to you, right? Yeah. Did you uh, ever lose any engines or on any? No, of we. I, I I don't think we did. I, th I don't think we ever lost one. Mm -hmm. uh, and no. I do recall seeing a B seventeen one time. At was on fire, you know, I could, I could see everything in that turret. And uh, the guys were bailing out, mm -hmm. and one guy, shoot, caught on fire. I don't know if he pulled the ripcord too soon or yeah. if it was on fire when he left the plane, mm -hmm. but, phew, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Good thing, when you came back from the war, 
these things that you saw, like you're just mm -hmm. talking about plane blowing up, or a guy, did, did you have bad dreams or anything like that? After no, I th yeah. thought of, you know, recalling a lot of times, but never, no, not. I, uh, I had a neighbor of mine in back in Kent, he came to visit me when I was over in England. He was an infantry man, and that poor, poor guy, he just shook all the time. And we took him up in a B-24 that had been overhauled, and he says, I'll never get in one of these things again. <laughs> he says, there's no place to hide. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was funny. And um, everybody got along pretty well in your crew? Oh, yeah, we were just like brothers, really. Yeah. Have to be. <laughs> yeah. You know, have to be able to depend on each all other. Good, all good guys. Yeah. There are not many of them left now that I know of. Ha, did you, have you kept in contact with some of them over the years? Yeah, the navigator, uh, he was in California. I know the co-pilot, he was in California and he came to visit. We visited him and he came to visit us and when I was, we had moved to uh, Colorado, to, he came to visit there too, and uh, then the uh, the navigator lived in in Iowa, and we had gone back to his Mary's from Iowa. We went back to visit and looked him up, and he lived in a real small town, and we got our picture in the paper, and they had a little write up about meeting after fifty years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he. But he's passed away too. So, did you have many uh, missions scrubbed because of the weather or whatever? I think we had a couple of them that were mm -hmm. scrubbed. Yeah, because we were flying. It was in the winter time. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and going up in the overcast—that's kind of scary, I guess, because we can't well, see. Well, that one—that one in Berlin—that was really scary when everybody scattered and you were flying a formation and. And they went, went, we came down, went through all those clouds, and then you know we saw Berlin below. But mm. Yeah, that was pretty scary. And I, it seems it has to be really difficult getting. I mean, you know, you have to fly either till the war's over, or you got to put in yeah. what thirty-five missions yeah. or something like that. And to get up every day and knowing you might not come back, uh, no, how, it, how do you deal with that? I think everybody had that feeling, but I don't I never really thought that much about it. Just try to survive, and that's the thing. Mm -hmm. The hardest part was to get you up at about two thirty in the morning and expect you to go down to mess hall and eat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I think everybody thought yeah. about that. That that like your mission to Berlin, how many hours would that be? Round I don't trip? know. It, uh, I don't think any of our missions were over eight hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was probably more like uh, five to seven. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. But. Uh, and so. When, do you remember what you were doing or when you first heard that the war in Europe was over? I know we had a three-day squadron party. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was so happy. <laughs> yeah. And when did you come back to the States then? Well, we spent a while over there working on our airplane uh, and we took the ground crew with us coming back to the States. So we came back around June of '45. Did your plane have a name? Little Iodine. Little Iodine. Yeah, oh, that's right. that was a comic strip character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and so, did you fly back to the States? Yeah, we stopped in the Azores, I remember, and then we landed uh, in Connecticut someplace. I can't remember the name of it now. But. Uh, yeah. We had all these ground crew guys in, you know, in the back. And mm -hmm. So what did you do for the rest of the war then? I came back and uh, I got married, and then I went. I went to University of Illinois and got my degree. 
Well, yeah. but when did you depart the service? I mean, when did you? Uh, November of 45. Okay. So, yeah. but, and you came back, so oh, you were I, back about a year or so. I did, I did come back and uh, I got selected. I don't know how they did this, but they said, you, your IQ is such, we want you to go to Pio, Texas to work in a personal affairs office, <laughs> which I did for a couple months. Oh, and. Yeah. Uh, then I had enough points to get out. So, no thought of staying in. No one. No, you had no thoughts of staying in no. the service. Yeah. Okay. So you got you got married. Now was was this your girlfriend from high school? Yes, it right? was. And yeah. what was her name? Uh, Bonnie. Okay. Bonnie. Yeah. And I think you said you had was it four children? Had, yeah, I had two girls with her. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. And what's their names? Uh, their daughters. Diana Ruman and Susan Brizendine. And where do they live? Uh, Susan lives in Fortuna, California, and uh, Diana lives in uh, Trubuco Canyon. Yeah, um, and they were near Lake Forest. Yeah. And do they have children? Yes. Uh, my daughter, Diana, has a girl, one girl, and the other daughter has uh, two boys. Um, so, okay, so you come back, you go to L University of Illinois, yeah, University of Illinois. For a year. what were you Thank studying? God for the GI Bill, I never made it. <laughs> Did you have a major? Yes, I was, uh, it was a business major, a minor in accounting, mm -hmm. so. So you went there for a year, then what? No, I went to University of Illinois for four years. Oh, for four, okay, yeah, okay. I got okay. my degree. And when you were there, uh, did you get to any of the football games? Yeah, I did get to go a couple of them, and, but of course, didn't have a lot of money, but uh, there was a guy that... Uh, did Buddy Young play when you were there? There was a, a black, uh, Buddy Young, he was a black... No, I don't recall no him. Time. I can't remember the name of the football players now. Yeah. But uh, I was always trying to work part-time to help, you know, yeah. make a living. Like what kind of work were you doing? Well, one summer I worked in a drive-in restaurant on the, on the fountain, mm -hmm. making sodas, Sundays and that. And, uh -huh. Soda you know, jerk? All, there were all mostly college kids there, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I bet it was. Yeah. I always yeah. thought that would have been a great job to have. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 So you graduated. What year did you graduate then from Illinois? Uh, let's see, 1950. And what did you do then? I went to work uh, for a while. I got in a management training program in my hometown, and uh, I met another guy there. He was in it also, and we both decided this wasn't going to get us anywhere. So, we uh, he moved to California and wrote, told me about the orange blossoms on the orange trees and on the road and how great it was. And so I packed up my family and moved. To and, uh, where to? I, uh, Glendale. Mm -hmm. I went to work for Lockheed for a while. Mm -hmm. and then uh, I went to work for Union Oil Company because I figured that was a better company to work for. Because mm -hmm. Lockheed, I got laid off there. They laid off 2,000 people because they lost a contract. Yeah. So that's, that did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I spent 35 years with Union Oil Company. Oh, okay. And, uh, In what capacity? I was an accountant to begin with and uh, uh, did uh, joint venture accounting and uh, oh, different accounting for staff accounting and and uh, then I got in, I got promoted into auditing which I really did enjoy and mm -hmm. I spent 20 years doing that. Mm -hmm. Did you and, have to do much traveling? Yes. Yeah, no. It was more like a third of the time. It wasn't really that bad, but just around the L.A. area. Or? No, it was uh, Texas, all over. Oh, really? And uh, overseas, I usually really? usually have one or two overseas trips a year. Hmm. So I got to go quite a few places. And was your home in Glendale pretty much all this time? No, uh, we. It was in Temple City, California. When Mary and I, oh, okay. Were the, the, the yeah, okay. Well, let's okay. So, 
you, you separated from your first wife yeah. at some point in time. What, yeah. what year was that? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Oh, that doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. But so, and you went, you're in Temple City. Is that up by San Francisco? No, Temple City is near Glendale. Or, uh, Pasadena. Pasadena. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, Mary, why don't you uh, go sit over next to old, so what's his name there? Yeah. <laughs> So Mary, where did you grow up? I grew up on a farm, a uh, rural farm in Iowa. Oh, okay. And uh, my parents have the original deed to the farm, and it's we still have it. Oh. And it's signed by President Pope. Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> going back a long, long way. Yeah, that's yeah. right away. And so, back. what was your maiden name, Mary? Lewis, L-E-W-I-S. Okay. And what did your dad do? Well, he was a farmer, I assume. Yeah, he was a farmer. And, and how did his family, how did they end up in? Well, the ancestors, uh, of course, came over from Wales, and um, they landed uh, on the... Uh, Cedar Rapids? No, they came in... Um, in New York? Uh, in, yeah, in New York, Ellis that Island. area, Ellis Island. Uh -huh. And they uh, came on to uh, Ohio, mm -hmm. and then uh, they had a... Uh, the Indians had a, uh, a scrimmage with the U.S. Cavalry, mm -hmm. and uh, they lost, so they had to give up part of their land. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my great grandfather sent scouts to go up the river to uh, look at this and see uh, if it might be worth his while. So he then, when they came back and told him that there was uh, some good land, he went uh, <laughs> and. <laughs> They call that area now Lewis Bottoms. I'll be darned. Yeah, oh, that was wow. bottom land. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that goes back a so. long way. And your mom, uh, what was her name? Her, her name was name? Neva Minnie Q C U E, and she went to a high school where in Shellsburg, Iowa, where my father went, and he met her there. And how did her family? Where did they come from? Uh, I'm not sure. My uh, mother's mother died at her birth and oh. she was raised by her uh, I grandparents see. I see. Yeah. But okay so um in what year were you born 1932 32. okay just, October a, just, 22nd. A, just a spring chicken right <laughs> <laughs> just a little kid do you remember much about world war ii or what you were doing at the time? uh well i would have been still in school because yeah. i didn't graduate from high school till 1950 but i do remember the war I don't remember too much about the Depression, but I was the seventh of eight children. Mm -hmm. And um, my older sister uh, remembered quite a bit about the Depression and yeah. how uh, it hurt uh, a lot of farmers did lose their farms during that mm -hmm. time. Yeah. But my dad was able to hang on to it. <laughs> now your farm, how big was the farm? Uh, it was prob uh, probably over 400 acres right. at the time when they first came and settled it. It was quite a bit. Yeah. And then they divided it. And what did you raise on the farm? When what did you raise on the farm? Uh, corn, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, um, soybeans. Soybeans yeah. and. Um, yeah. <laughs> wheat, wheat, corn, soybeans. Probably. No, I don't think they no had wheat. any wheat. Uh -huh. Of course, when my mother had a huge garden. Yeah. Did you have any animals? Uh, we didn't have uh, deers then, but there were deers when it was first settled, and then they had a real hard winter, I guess, that wiped the deers out. Deer, uh, but yeah. now the deers have come <laughs> back. Oh, that's good. <laughs> but did you have cows and Oh, yes. Uh, and stuff we had like milk that. cows, and yeah. we took the uh, cream into a little local <laughs> town and sold it and eggs and, you did, know, for Did you get to uh, milk the cows? <laughs> I didn't, but I had five brothers, and yeah. they were, they milked them. I still remember our next-door neighbors, they had cows and stuff, and we would get milk from them. They put in the glass milk bottles, and a little cardboard stopper like that would be on mm -hmm. And they would leave it on our lane, They're like our property line, just leave the, and then in the wintertime you go, and of course it would freeze, and yeah, it would be up, up that, <laughs> the, yeah. the top, yeah. Was, yeah. you know, and of course it was, the butterfat was all on the top, you know, <laughs> nothing was homogenized. Yeah. 
Nor pasteurized, probably. I don't know. Yeah, they might have pasteurized it. I don't know, but uh, didn't seem to hurt us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had an old uh, a separator that uh, they mm -hmm. put the milk in and separated the cream from it and so okay. forth. <laughs> yeah. So how did you end up in California then? Well, uh, my sister, I had two sisters, and uh, my sister was in the Navy during the <coughs> war, and her husband was uh, in the Army. And after they uh, I got out of the service, they, came, they uh, wanted to come to California because that's where my sister was stationed sure. during the time because she was in the Navy. You know. So then I, later, after I graduated from high school, I wanted to leave the farm and uh, get a job and make it on my own. So yeah. I went to California. And what kind of job did you get? I w worked for a prudential insurance company in, there in Alhambra, California, and mm -hmm. for the, uh, quite a few years. Okay. And uh, d d how, how did you guys meet, or when did you first well, meet? Well, um, we both had children. Mm -hmm. I had a, a son and a daughter, and uh, we met at Parents Without Partners. Oh, yeah. They yeah. had a group like that. And your, your first husband, what was his name? Uh, it was, his last name was Gay, Morris Gay. Okay. And what did he do? Did he work? Oh, uh, he worked for the county, Los Angeles okay. County. And you had two children? Yes. Yeah. I and had what, a, what's their names? Uh, Glenn Gay and uh, Deanne, her name is now a Slip, S L I P V. And where do they live? Uh, Deanne lives in San Dimas and uh, Glenn lives in. Uh, Rosamond, which is out in the Antelope yeah. Valley, that way. And do they have children? Yes. I have, um, my daughter had a, uh, two daughters and a son, and the one daughter is married, and I have a great-granddaughter, oh. and she's going to be two in June. Oh. <laughs> and my son had uh, a, a son and a daughter, too. So you've got about eight between you, yeah, grandchildren? We have, we have a lot of grandkids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have nine, so. <laughs> um, so, um, and, uh, so, uh, oh, you want a, a singles, or the, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Yeah, we've uh, been married 38 years, and 39 is coming end of June. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, that's great. And so, um, uh, you, so when did you retire? Uh, let's see, when did I retire? <laughs> I re actually retired around 90, when was it, 97? I, I went, so. then I, they asked me to come back on contract, so I came back on contract for a couple years. Yeah. So I, I, I think that, no, wait a minute, I guess the last time I worked was 93, wasn't it? Yeah, it could have been, and then you went back. I think that's been. Yeah. Did you, when you guys were married, did you continue to work too? Yes. Because yeah. uh -huh. he traveled quite a bit, and, yeah. and so I worked and took care of my yeah. two kids, children. Yeah. <laughs> so the kids, when you got married, were about how old then? Uh, my daughter probably was about six or seven, and mm -hmm. I believe my son may have been close to 13. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you were a little older? Were yeah, my, uh, God, I don't remember just what, well, let's see. Well, your I'll sons were close to at the end. I yeah, they were pretty But close. I mean, they all did. They all, they all got, got along fine. and everything. Yeah. That's good, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and what did you guys, um, did you have hobbies or interests or sports or things that you guys like to do? Yeah, well, and, well after we retired, we took some cruises too, mm -hmm. you know. And what were some of your favorite cruises? Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite. So the, yeah. Uh, we went, we did a couple Caribbean cruises and we went to, uh, what was it? Uh, Italy, not Italy, but. Uh, well, we went to England and yeah, we, went we to did England. a bit in Baptist Yeah, tour that's right, we did. Yeah, and went uh, to Ireland. Ireland. And yeah. I would sometimes join him at the end of, he might yeah. be somewhere for about five or six weeks, and mm -hmm. then after he was through there, I, 
one time I joined him in uh, Australia. Oh, yeah. yeah. A trip there. Uh -huh. I was coming from the Philippines, and uh, I got to the uh, Sydney one hour before she landed, so <laughs> it worked out pretty well. <laughs> we went to Sydney once. That's, that's such a beautiful city. Oh, I it thought. is. It's, just, yeah. it's like San Francisco, but warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was nice. Yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful country. Yeah. And so, did you say Temple City is where you yeah, lived? Yeah, that's on? where we lived. What street did you live on, or the address you remember? Uh, Bell. Bell Street. Bell Street. Yeah. I think it was 9837 yeah, Bell Street. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Now, do you live in Hemet now? Yes. Yeah, we, um, we, we lived, uh, we went to uh, Arizona after we retired. Uh, after mm -hmm. retired and, uh, where was that? What's the name of it? Prescott. Oh, Prescott, Prescott up in that. We mountains. lived there for 10 years. Did you? Yeah. yeah. And decided we were getting old, so we better look for a retirement place. Well, it'd be closer to the children, too, so yeah. We, yeah. we had friends that were living at the village then. Yeah. And that's where Dave DeVries lives, is that correct? Yes, that's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he yeah. seems to like it really well. Yeah. So. How long have you been living there now? About eight years, uh -huh. I guess. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. A lot of activity there, I assume? Yes, yes. there is. There's yeah. what, what do you guys uh, like to do? Well, yeah. I get up at 7.30 and go down to the pool for exercise. Good. And, and I, uh, go ahead. No, I, I go to exercise class twice a week, and then we both go to Tai Chi twice a week. <laughs> yeah. So exercise about four days a week. Well, good for you. That's that's going to keep you going. And we get out and they have a putting green there and we get together with others and have a little putting contest on Saturdays. Oh, that's it. And we've played shuffleboard. Yeah, we play shuffleboard. And yeah, my wife and I, we, li we like to take yoga and, and Pilates, stuff like that. Yeah. So we, I think it's really, really good to I feel a lot better when to do that. And they have a card game at the village called Hand and Foot. <laughs> my <laughs> mother very, plays that. My mother's popular. <laughs> my mother's 98. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. She was just out here a couple of weeks. She loves to play that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. So, um, well, I guess we're and um, do you guys go to church or do you like to do yes. that? Do yes, they have a, a a nice church there at the village right mm -hmm. there if you mm -hmm. want to go yeah. there uh -huh. and uh, I have belonged to the Methodist Church in fact uh, when uh, my great-great-grandfather settled the land he gave some uh, land to the Methodist Church and mm -hmm. yeah. so that was yeah. something I probably <laughs> yeah that's good yeah. so did you get to see your grandchildren very often well, not as not often as I'd right. like, but they, they do come quite often. Yeah. They're busy, too, and so. they're working. and Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You don't spoil that two-year-old, do you? Well, you don't spoil your two-year-old great-granddaughter oh, too much, yes. do you? <laughs> She's coming for Mother's Day. You see, oh, that, that <laughs> I'm really special. excited to yeah. see her. Yeah. She's real cute. Real okay. cute little girl. Well, I think we might be about ready to wrap this up. Okay. Um, anything that you'd like to add that you can think of? I'd like no. to add no. the fact that when Bob was leaving on the Queen Mary, he said he got the most sinking feeling he'd ever had in his yeah. life when he saw the Statue yes. of Liberty uh, disappear. Yeah, it, I had never been any place, you know, Illinois and cornfields and everything, mm -hmm. and never saw the ocean before. And when I saw the Statue of Liberty disappearing, yeah. it was a sinking feeling. Yeah. I think a lot of other guys felt the same way. <laughs> I'm sure they did. Yeah. Um, oh, you're looking for pictures? Oh. Uh, well, uh, just wait. We'll, okay. we'll do that. Uh, we're almost done. We'll do okay. it when we get done. Um, I usually like to ask um, uh, someone like you, uh -huh. um, if you had any advice for these young people that may be going into harm's way, yeah. you know, like you did, yeah. what might it be? I don't know. I guess all you can do is rely on your training and uh, just hope for the best. Yeah. That, uh, and have faith, you know, trust in God. I think God answered my call a couple of times, and uh, so I, I think just just have to have faith that you're going to survive it and get back. 
Bob, thank you so much for thank your you, service Dave. to our country. Thanks You're for welcome. coming in and, and sharing with us today. Thank you. Mary, thank you for coming along too. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Okay. I'll shut this down here.